Hello, my name is Mackenzie Hewitt, and this is my presentation for adolescent literature on body image and um, the differences between body image in Mexican culture um, compared to American culture, specifically Chicago. So first, what influences body image? Most research says that adolescent body image perception is affected by cultural ideals and values, present and prior experience, self-comparison to others, and expectations of society and needs. It also kind of emphasizes that because body image may be more of a cultural reflection than a response to one's actual physical dimensions, the adolescent judge to be of normal weight may well hold a distorted body image. So this is an issue um, with children and their idea of oneself and of specific body image. So first, the culture around America's body image um, is a little bit more gauged towards being skinny. So one quote says that eating disorders have become increasingly prevalent in North America. Anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating disorders were previously thought to solely affect Caucasian women. However, contemporary research has studied the occurrence of this phenomenon in ethnic minority women, such as Latinas. So this is the idea that women want to be skinny, they want to be thin, they don't like being called um, heavy or, or, or fat or overweight. Some um, researchers also say that lower levels of self-esteem predicted higher levels of anorexia and bulimic um, symptomology. So not eating or having a bulimic lifestyle to meet America's standards for body image. And then on the flip side, Mexico's or Mexican culture is a little bit different um, in regards to body image. In recent years, obesity rates have increased markedly in Latin American culture. Household wealth can shape adolescent health through food availability. So if your family can't afford healthy foods, that's going to affect a child's weight. Um, housing quality and access to medical care is incredibly important when it comes to body image and lower income countries. Household wealth is generally positively associated with adolescent obesity. So there's not much of a push to be skinny in Mexico. Um, there's actually a lot of acceptance around obesity and being heavier. Um, and there's also positive association with being heavier in a Mexican culture. So there are Great examples of this in the book, I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter. The main character, um, Julia, is from Chicago, but she has a family that is deeply rooted in Mexican culture. So she's having to deal with the struggles of which culture is she going to identify with when it comes to her body image. So one example of this is whenever she's in Chicago, um, this is how she's viewed. There's a quote that says, they are both pale and thin with stick straight hair, and I am chubby, short, and dark like a paw. I'm not like super fat or anything, but I have thick legs and my stomach is definitely not flat. Oh, and my boobs are much too big for my body. So this is how others view her and she views herself whenever she's in Chicago. But on the flip side, when she visits Mexico, people see her as being too skinny. This quote um, mama gives me a gigantic plate of food. You're too skinny, she tells me. By the time you leave, your mother won't even recognize you. You'll see. So when she's in Mexico, others view her as being way too skinny and um, she isn't womanly enough. And the issue with this is her body is the same from Chicago and Mexico. But in Mexico, she's too skinny. And in Chicago, she's too fat. And another issue with that is both of those have negative connotations. So no matter where she is, she is getting a negative stereotype of what her body image is. And there's very many negative implications of this. Um, here's a picture of someone who thinks that, um, or they may be confused about their body image. Heavy, thick, skinny, fat, tall, thin, large, chubby, short, lean. So all of these different words are getting thrown around and obviously you can tell that this individual is very confused. And I think that's how Julia feels about her body image in the book. 
I am not your perfect Mexican daughter. Another negative implication can be body dysmorphia. So here's a video explaining body dysmorphia. Today's topic is body dysmorphic disorder, or BDD. Body dysmorphic disorder is a mental disorder marked by an obsessive idea of perceived defects or flaws in one's appearance. A flaw that to others is considered minor or not observable. People suffering from BDD can feel emotion, such as shame or disgust, concerning a part or parts of their body part and fixate on this. The obsession is always so intense that the person repeatedly checks and compares the perceived flaw, seeks reassurance, sometimes for several hours each day. The person can also adopt unusual routines to avoid social contact that exposes the perceived flaw. These pervasive thoughts about their appearance and body image interfere with their daily life via educational and occupational dysfunction, as well as isolation. No matter how many times people assure them that there is no flaw, they cannot accept that the issue doesn't exist. So that just kind of explains one of um, the many issues revolving around body image and negative body image. So in conclusion, I think that um, there is a huge difference between the culture around body image in Mexico versus America um, and Chicago. And in the book, I think that the main character, Julia, has a lot of mixed emotions. I think she feels confused. I think she has a low self-esteem and this potentially could encourage um, some type of eating disorder, which is not healthy for anybody. And I definitely think that in YA literature, body positivity should be emphasized more and the acceptance of body and all bodies should be included in this writing. And I also think it's really important to be culturally and economically aware of um, children in our life and students and people that we um, are in contact with because you need to be aware of what their culture values when it comes to body image and what they may be struggling with as well as their socioeconomic standings. There are differences in what people can gain access to and how much emphasis they put on their health in, re um, in regards to their economic abilities. And here's my work cited and I hope you learned something from the presentation. Thanks.